So we got a lot of micro brands over the past couple of years. In my mind, I sort of put them into three categories. You've got ones that just rip off well-known designs, and then you have ones that look original but fall short on build quality. And lastly, we have like the upper echelon of micro brands that look and feel just as good in the hand as they do in press photos. And atop of this micro brand pyramid sits Ferrer. And in today's video, I'm gonna use this newly released Ferrer Stanhope 2 to demonstrate my point. Hey guys, I'm Max and this is Watch Crunch. So over the last week or so on the website, we had one of our members named All The Watches who hosted a micro brand championships. So he got together 36 popular brands and half of them were eliminated every day based on the voting by the community. So I had my money on Ferrer the entire time as I had just bought the Stanhope. And on day one, Ferrer made quick work of Astor and Banks a brand I do love. And day two was a tough matchup against Brew, but Ferrer came out on top. And then we had a British slugfest where Ferrer outdueled Christopher Ward. And on the final day, saw Ferrer go up against the, the beloved Baltic of France. And with 60% of the hundreds of votes cast, Ferrer took the crown at the end of the day. So in this video, let's see why Ferrer is so popular and also how you can win this sold out watch for yourself. So we love watches ultimately because we love a good story and Ferrer's marketing department understands this. Every Ferrer promo video is filled with heroic scenery and aspirational imagery. And it's easy to see that this company wants the wearer of their watches to feel something. Now the Stanhope is named after Lady Hester Stanhope, one of the most pioneer women in history. No, that doesn't mean this is a lady's watch. But Lady Stanhope blazed a trail through the Middle East at a time when women were told they belong inside the house. And she often had to dress up as a man during her travels just to get by. She conducted some of the first modern archaeological excavations as part of her exploits. This is actually not the first Stanhope model. It's rather a follow-up to a 37 millimeter version introduced in 2018. This more grown up and thought out rendition though, boasts a confident 39 millimeter cushion shaped case that has retro chic written all over it. The complex curves are accentuated by entirely polished case, which stands at just 10 and a half millimeters thick. Short and compact lugs gives it a highly wearable 44 millimeter lug to lug distance. This watch is full of visual details. The dial features a crosshatch pattern that Ferrer calls piquet. I don't really know what that means, but it looks like a silvery waffle dial to me. For our markers, we get a combination of rectangular batons and Arabic numerals at the 3, 9, and 12. And these markers have polished surrounds that reflect the light and are filled in the center with navy blue lacquer paint. At the 6, we get a subdial with a bright red second hand to break up that monochromatic color scheme. Light blue accents also are found here as well as in a wonderfully intricate minute track. Now Farrah has always stood out to me by their use of colors. And though the Stanhope is far from their wildest model, we nevertheless can see their design language shining through. Now guys, please take a second, drop a like for this video. And I know that I promised you a Top Gun watch video, but it's taken a hot minute for me to source one from the other side of the world. Well, it's finally here. So make sure you're subscribed because we're about to take it to the danger zone. One reason why micro brands often lose their luster after a couple of weeks on the wrist and why great watches have that slow release charm, a lot of it comes down to attention to detail. And Ferrer goes a long way to leave little Easter eggs for us. For example, I love the Ferrer applied logo on the dial. It looks like a simple faceted arrowhead, but we also find it engraved in bronze on the crown. It's such a nice touch. Also, does this remind anyone of the Star Trek insignia? 
come on, I'm not the only Trek nerd here, am I? Now from the side, we get a good glimpse of the sloping curves of this cushion shaped case. It's almost like Rolex Oyster like as it tapers organically into sharp lugs at both ends. On top of the mid case, there's a second squarish tier that frames the circular sapphire crystal. And even the strap, often an afterthought, is great here. It's a thick, chunky, full grain leather with a natural texture. The thickness pairs well with the case and just kind of melts into it. And it tucks seamlessly between those 20 millimeter lugs. Now you can just tell that the strap is gonna break in nicely and it terminates in a hefty buckle, again featuring that attractive Ferrer logo. Now, if we turn the watch over, we get a display case back showing off more of Ferrer's customizations. Now, some might question why a proud British watch would house a Salida Swiss movement, but hey, I mean, you gotta start somewhere, right? It's hard to build in-house movements from the get-go. Remember, even Nomos used ETA movements before 2005. But anyhow, the 4 Hz SW216-1 is an elaborated caliber with 45 hours of power reserve and respectable accuracy. Farrah has also gone the extra mile by decorating the large bridge with an intricate pattern. It also has a very tactile feel and is a pleasure to hand wind. Another reason why I find it hard to love micro brands is that sometimes you get it out of the box and you realize that the fit and finish just isn't there. Now, this is far from the case with Ferrer. The Stanhope feels solid and well put together and like a polished pebble on the wrist. The watch sits tight and squat and might be one of the most comfortable in recent memory. The retro inspired design has a timeless quality about it, but these fun pops of color keep it from being boring. This watch will make a great summer watch that will look at home with casual or formal attire. So Ferrer is the undisputed 2022 Watch Crunch micro brand champion because they're able to nail a combination of fun, colorful design grounded in vintage cues. It has superb fit and finish on par with most mid-tier Swiss offerings, all wrapped in a package that's affordable for the enthusiast. Now, this is a very balanced watch and at $1,000, it's hard to find any faults with it. Actually, there is just one problem. This was limited to 200 pieces and they're all sold out. But the good news is to celebrate Ferrer's win on the inaugural micro brand challenge, we're gonna give this watch away to you. Just have to do three simple things. Subscribe to this YouTube channel, follow us on Instagram at watch underscore crunch and leave a comment on watchcrunch.com to which I'll put a link in the pinned comments below. Good luck, stay crunchy. I'll see you in the next one.